100% recall, including the page numbers. So he got them all in order. So there's something in his optical system allows him to put things in order when he's reading. I asked if I could take the same test because his brain was the only thing everybody, anybody studied. It took me 23 minutes to read what he read in 53 seconds, and I had a 45% recall, which was normal. One of the, the main things is that he's able to read one page with one eye and another page with another eye in, in eight seconds and, and put that into his hard disk. He's just an amazing encyclopedia of knowledge, of obscure knowledge as well. But also, one gets the sense that he's a very warm, feeling, and soulful individual, and it was actually quite a pleasure to meet him. Which years did Churchill serve as British Prime Minister? 1940, 45, 1951, 55. Now, who wrote the original score for the movie Dr. Zhivago? Marshara. What is the main movie, music? Somewhere, my love. When did Alfred Hitchcock live? 1899, 1980. <laughs> who succeeded Charlemagne? It was Louis the Great, number one. Can you name the last six predecessors of Elizabeth of England and the, it the was, current It day? was George the Sixth, one. Edward the Eighth, two. George the Fifth, three. Edward the Seventh, four. Victoria, five, and William the Fourth, six. Okay. Can you name the winning horses, uh, the triple winners in the Kentucky Derby? Sir Bart, Gallant Fox, Om Omaha, War Admiral, World Away, Camp Lee. How long is the Amazon River? About 4,000 miles. When did Alexander the Great live? 356, 323 B.C. When did the first record of the Beatles hit the Billboard charts of America? February 1964. Okay. You know what it was? What was the first song on it? I want to hold your hand. All the savants have a remarkable memory, but Kim's memory is like no other person's memory. And I've never, and I, I, I've looked in the literature in the last 145 years, and there is no other case like his in that history either. In the bustle of Potsdamer Platz, Kim Peek would be helpless. My brain, however, does what it has learned. It makes choices and forgets, with no effort at all. In fractions of a second, I avoid people I hardly notice. I estimate how fast cars are driving without really looking. I simply ignore millions of details so I can concentrate on the essentials. My brain has learned to construct an average. Even though friends look different every day, I can easily make them out in a crowd because unconscious filter systems not only organize what I see, but also what I remember. The cerebral cortex memorizes everything I can put into words. Yet soon after, I only have access to a fraction of it. Science still can't clearly explain why this is. What we do know is that two triggers lie in the limbic system, the hippocampus and the amygdala. These give an emotional coloring to my memories, so that I forget Goethe's birthday or the rule of three, but not the color red or the school trip to Zult. What I see from day to day is really just the sum of my memories. That's why each of us sees a different world, even when we're standing on the same escalator. In order to maneuver in this complex world, we have models of the world as we've seen it before in our head. I call them mindsets. And we see the world through the mindsets, and that simplifies life. When life changes a little, it doesn't matter. We are not aware of it. We have projected out what we expect. Autistic savants don't have these models. They see the world as the way it really is, different every day. In California, a team of NASA researchers worked to discover the mysterious brain circuits of Kim Peek, the Kim Pewter. Kim has no filter systems. He just has an enormous hard drive. Do you want to know when his birthday is? When? 
on June 23rd, 55. It is a Thursday, and this year it's a, a Thursday. 50 years old. <laughs> When's he going to retire? 2020 will be on a Tuesday. 50 years old. The NASA project uses for the first time a combination of newly developed high-tech tests. The same technology will be used in the future to monitor the medical condition of astronauts in space. Kim's father could hardly have imagined that his son would one day be in demand as a subject of research. It took a while for people not to dismiss Kim as disabled, but rather to acknowledge him for his astounding abilities. About 16 months, uh, was the first time he noticed he would uh, be able to uh, read and enjoyed that. But when he was born, and uh, uh, nine months, we took him for a physical f recommendation of the uh, doctor, and uh, they told us that he was uh, severely mentally retarded. He would never be able to learn. He would never be able to walk. We should institutionalize him and forget about him. At four, Kim learns the first eight volumes of a lexicon by heart. He learns all of the USA's highways, phone codes and TV networks, but still is seen as a freak. At 33, by chance, he meets the Hollywood scriptwriter Barry Morrow. Morrow immediately begins work on Rain Man. Two years later, Kim and his father Fran fly to Los Angeles. Dustin Hoffman dedicates his Oscar to Kim with the words, I may be the star, but you are the heavens. It is only through Rain Man that Kim has evolved from being a shy and unsociable memory master into an entertainer. He has answered thousands of questions in lectures, on school visits and at research seminars. Female history students fall for Kim's charms in a matter of seconds. This is my birthday, August 5th, 1947. It was a... Uh... It was a Tuesday, and this year it's a Friday, and you retire in 2012 on a Sunday. And what was the best picture when she was 15? Lawrence of Arabia. That's right. This is Laura Kim right here. She's going to tell Laura. you her birthday. January 20th, 1987. It was a Tuesday, and this year it was Thursday, and you retire in 2052 on a... Saturday. Are you familiar with Rembrandt? 1606, 1669. Where was he born? He was born in Delft, Holland, but lived for a time in even old New York. Was once the winter dev. <laughs> How did they make of it? <laughs> they love applause just like we love applause. They, they like that kind of feedback, and that has a, 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 an effect which is just uh, uh, reinforcing, and, and, and from that uh, there is this broadening. So it's not just doing their thing or rehearsing their talent. With that comes more language, increased socialization, and uh, a less, less dependence. The most important thing about him is over the last 15 years, he's, uh, his heart's become bigger than his brain towards people. He loves people. Howard Potter feels most comfortable in an empty stadium. He doesn't like to look at people face to face and has only recently learned to buy chocolate at the corner shop on his own. His brain, however, knows the results of nearly every game in world football and the day of the week for any date 22,000 years before and after Christ. Goal celebrations or the dramas of relegation don't mean much to Howard. His brain only sees numbers. He just follows what the crowd does. He doesn't instigate anything on his own. He will kind of, if a goal is scored, he will jump up, but that's because the rest of the people have jumped up. As a child, Howard Potter loved mashed potatoes and peas. One day, he complained about his brother Duncan having two more peas on his plate than he did. Stunned, the parents counted every pea on the children's plates. And indeed, Howard had exactly two peas less. 
It was only when Howard began to perform his calendrical party trick at family celebrations in Bournemouth, southern England, that the amazed Potters realized that their son Howard was a savant. Over time, Howard discovered his interest in prime numbers, square roots, the top of the pops hit parade, and the infinite reservoir of the football results. Who played the two semi-finals of the World Cup in 1982 in Spain, and what were their results? Italy.